How's it going guys and welcome to another video where I will continue to work on that ecosystem slash evolution simulator that I started in the last video because that video has been my most viewed video by far. Plus I'm eager to get this project to the finished state that I'm wanting. Speaking of the last video, yikes, it has been quite a thick minute since I posted it. May 24th, just over two months, about time for an update. And I wrote that line five months ago. So, given that it's been so long since my last upload, you'd be tempted to assume that I got a lot done. Wrong! I began working on the 17th of June. I checked my to-do list to find that nothing was there because my smooth brain is unable to write stuff down. So, I started with the goal of getting the plankton in and getting some settings in to allow for more experimentation with the simulation. But first, I was showing off the project to one of the voices behind the dumpster and I found myself in need of a kill button. So I took a full day to do that. And given the voices were still talking, the idea develops further into a mess. After some quick extra coding and a visit to a couple online thesauruses, each time you click the button, the text on it changes to a different synonym or slang for kill. A few of my favorites are Merc, Isom, and Liquidate. Next, the voices required that the button get even more complex, so I created a milestone system like you'd see in competitive first-person shooters. We got double kill, triple kill, killionaire, and a few others. Now, on to something more useful. The plankton were super simple to implement. I renamed the crayfish script into an animal script, then used that as a parent script for the crayfish and plankton scripts. I had them working in no time at all. However, they acted exactly like the crayfish and didn't interact with each other. I made some changes to the plankton's food use rate to account for it being smaller, as well as to give it an advantage because they were about to fall prey to the crayfish. Excellent! Now that that works, let's give the plankton a chance to run away. I changed the shape of both organisms' sense radius. Instead of being a circle in front of them, the circle is larger and a third of its diameter is behind the creature. This took longer than I'd like to admit, my first few attempts were foiled by the plankton getting distracted and forgetting that they were being chased, or trying to run away and go for food at the same time, neither of which worked very well. My final solution involved using the inverse function of the midpoint formula, but instead of just googling it, I did some math in paint, because why wouldn't I do that, instead of googling it like any normal person? So, when running away, Plankton will set their target at a point directly opposite the crayfish chasing them, and this worked perfectly. Although I didn't test this extensively, it appeared to work, so I went to the next task, which was adding additional settings for the simulation. This would come to bite me pretty hard later. The settings took me a few hours of work, but it was nothing difficult and I learned how to pass data between scenes. I don't understand why it works, but it does. The notable settings I added were area size, max crayfish count, max plankton count, starting food count, food spawn cooldown, and max time scale. These were working perfectly. I built a version of the game to test with these new additions, and it became unresponsive. I went back to Unity to see if this happened in the editor as well. Thankfully it did, because the, a problem that only happened in a standalone application would have been a nightmare. This bug was still a huge pain in the butt though. I coded in a fallback from the simulation settings system because that was my most recent addition and my first suspect. I spent a total of nine semi-productive hours over the course of four days. It seemed impossible to find the source. It never happened right away, only happening randomly between 80 and 200 seconds into simulating. So I gave up. And that's the end, bye. Eventually, I got the motivation to come back to it, but in the meantime, played some Rust, got my butt kick, followed by every Halo game aside from 5 with a buddy in preparation for Infinite. It was good time. And finally, sometime in late July, I had a sudden burst of motivation and productivity. I came back with a fresh head and I had the freezes fixed in an hour. The source had to do with a check that exists in the Plankton's and Crayfish's AI. When a creature needed a place to go, they'd pick a point that is within a certain distance of them, controlled by a gene. If the location they chose is outside of the boundaries, they pick a new point, using a while loop. This meant that if they were too far out of the boundaries to begin with, an infinite loop would be created, causing the freeze. 
This happened often because if a crayfish sees a plankton, they would chase it until they saw closer food or died. To fix this, I replaced the while loop with a couple if statements so it generates a new coordinate a limited number of times before just choosing a coordinate within the boundaries. Bug squashed. Great. There was one more thing I wanted to add. Graphs. Now, I know you just asked, why graphs? And to that I say, for science. I wanted an easy way to see how populations and genes changed over time. I followed this tutorial by CodeMonkey, which was super helpful, and I had a graph working. I put together a random data generator to generate random data for testing, and the results were good, but the data was not stocks. I may have spent quite some time playing with it. I interrupted the graph work for some small UI tweaks, and then it was back to the graphs. I set up a way to collect data, and it worked pretty well immediately. So now I had a button that would pull up all the nerdy stuff. The voices did not approve, but I had gained the high ground. They no longer held any power over me. So I further developed the graphs. I added axes that adjusted to the highest value in the lot. Then following this, I took a break to develop weapons of mass destruction in Kerbal Space Program. Next, I encountered quite the tedious task. To show the food count, population, and all of the genes, I would need 25 graphs. I eventually shortened this to 12 by putting the population of the two species on one graph and doing the same for every gene, but I put this off for a week or two. When I finally got to work on it, there was something that needed to work beforehand, combining two data sets on a graph. At this point, it had been at least a month since I wrote the code, and I did not document anything. So I had to just read it and weep at the fact that I couldn't understand what it was doing. However, it seemed fairly straightforward. The script just ran through the data and plotted the points. Just have it run through both sets. This took a bit of tinkering to work, but it eventually showed signs of working, along with a list of the same error that I had never seen before. The wording of the error went straight over my head as well. So I searched around on the internet to find that my situation was too weird or I didn't understand it enough in order to search for the right thing. I sat on this single error for at least two months before I got a second burst of motivation in which I rewrote the entire graph system as best I could with two data sets at its core. The finished product still gave me that error. However, the graphs were readable and there didn't seem to be anything wrong. I did some more tinkering to no avail, so I shrugged it off. If there was any crazy bugs that come from this, I would deal with them later. I had grown almost sick of this project by now, and I was ready to move on to something else. I created the graph for each gene, hooked them up, and built it. And I'm going to call it there. I've been working on this project for too long, and I'm itching to start something new. It's on itch.io if you'd like to check it out. Link in the description. Subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. I have a really weird project on the horizon that you won't want to miss. Later, nerds.